Hello and welcome back to the workbench. What I'm looking at today are the cheapest filaments I could find on Amazon for PETG. And uh, the results were really surprising, so let's dig into it. What it is, is the uh, Duramic 3D printing filament. It actually looks very similar to the roll from Amazon itself. And the filament itself looks fairly good. It's a little weird for PETG. It seems a little more flexible than the other ones I've used, but that's fine. Uh, let's check the filament diameter quick. So the other interesting thing on this was that the filament comes with a bunch of things in the box, more than just the filament. Let's see before I check the diameter. Yeah, always make sure that you don't miswrap your spool and get it bound, cause binding in it. So it comes in a box, as you might expect. I bought two of them so I can test out some additional filament. Uh, I'll get some prints done, and then I, once I've got a bunch of prints done, I'll see how it's doing on the roll afterwards and actually do a, do a look back at it as to how the prints came out. Similar to what I did with the cheapest PLA filament on eBay. But what you get in the box is actually pretty impressive for 12 and change. It's PETG Bulk US ceramic filament, but comes in a nice mylar, possibly, sealed plastic container. So you get that with some deskin in it. Uh, and then you also get cards. Not sure what I need those. But it comes with a stickable 220 by 220 print surface, which is kind of neat. I don't need it particularly for the Versailles 3 Mark III, but I'll keep it on the shelf. I'm sure it'll come in useful for something. And the filament itself. Now the filament actually printed out pretty well. I'll get to that in a second. I did some initial benchies on it. It was kind of impressive, actually. And weirdly, the thing I found odd on the benchies was it actually worked in a very similar manner to the Prusa filament itself. Whereas the filament I got in from um, Amazon, I had to actually turn the fan off on from the defaults. Since we're just checking it at a single cross section, it could be inaccurate on the round. Eh, it looks like it's about 1.75. I'm getting some weirdly low, well, yeah. So it's fairly accurate to 1.75, I think. I'm getting some off readings, but I think that's just me operating the calipers. It seems like more often than not, I'm getting 1.75 when I gently place them on it and don't cause a indentation myself. I've always been meaning to make a optical reader for the size on these filaments so I can get the actual round and then compute the cross section in two directions optically so I'm not making an error because I'm pressing down on the caliper or, or something like that. But the uh, it looks like they're probably 1.75 on the initial part of the roll anyway, which is good. Seems accurate. And here's the benchies I printed out. So one of the things I noticed on the benchies is you see that on the bottom where it's chewed up. If I don't run the layer fan on these, I get that. I tried it a few different temperatures, 240 and 250 all the way or 240 and 230 all the way through. It's a 0.15 layer height, the fan off with 30 to 50% for bridging and short areas. You can see where the, the smaller areas print that out just fine. And the larger areas where it wasn't running the fan ever got uh, pretty chewed up. Whereas with the fan on and the, just the Prusa default settings, it printed a near perfect benchy out of PETG. You don't really get too much better than this uh, without you know, doing a lot of either refining on the printer or um, messing around. I, I'm not sure you could really get better than this period, actually. I was fairly impressed with this, this printout when I got it off the printer. So, the Duramic 3D filament actually worked pretty good. It was the cheapest stuff I could find on Amazon. It was 12... Uh, Eh, around 1250 shipped and that's it it's pretty good it's uh, surprisingly good given the price 
I didn't expect much out of it, frankly, and uh, it blew away my expectations. It's actually a little nicer to print with than the Amazon printing filament, I thought. Uh, it actually works for starters with the default settings in Prusa, which is great. I don't have to change anything. Mess around with them to get it to uh, print on bridges and print fine uh, on cooled areas. Unlike the Amazon, which I had to jockey a little bit for the fan cooling, and I had to change the speed settings on it, and then it finally finally worked okay. Uh, these are all printed with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I switched out from the large nozzle I had been using over to the smaller size for the printing because I figured most folks are using a 0.4 with their printer and it would be a little more representative of what you're likely to find. And you can check out the printing. I actually did video of one of these printing out, so chewed up a little bit. But aside from that, it did actually print out okay and the stuff fed okay. I didn't have any problems with that. Didn't seem like there's any garbage in the filament or air bubbles. Didn't notice any problems with the um, with the filament going through. So, cheapest filament on eBay, pretty good. I'll do a follow up with more prints on it and how it's working after I've finished off most of the roll. But since it worked out pretty well, I wanted to get something up to show you. It. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the videos, subscribe down below and uh, leave comments. Any questions you have on this stuff, I'd be more than happy to do anything particular that you're looking to find out whatever about it or test it or whatever you'd like to see, let me know. See you next time. But just to be clear, I'm not shilling for these guys. I don't know who they are. I don't take any money in, in exchange for any of this stuff. So, and I will certainly let you know if that is ever not the case. Till next time.